folks, I can't help but feel like we are witnessing some sort of cover-up take place in real time right in front of our faces. A cover-up from Boeing and NASA. And look, we all know that recently there have been a couple of Boeing whistleblowers that are unfortunately no longer with us due to some very mysterious circumstances. So before I go any further, let me go ahead and say this. I love life and I would never do to myself what that one Boeing whistleblower supposedly did to himself, if you catch my drift. But anyways, it came out yesterday, folks, that NASA knew that there was a leak on the Boeing Starliner that they launched into outer space to the International Space Station. Before the launch, they knew that the Starliner was leaking. They were aware of a couple of problems and just with no regard to the lives of the astronauts, they went ahead with their mission anyway. Well, luckily, the astronauts made it to the space station, but now they're stuck. And Boeing and NASA are currently trying to downplay how dangerous what they did was. And they're trying to pretend as if, oh, these astronauts can come back tomorrow on the star on the Starliner. Everything's going to be okay. They're pretending like everything's going to be okay, but if everything was going to be okay, these astronauts would have returned home a couple of weeks ago, but they haven't because we know there are problems and it's already being reported. The information is already starting to get out there. But as I looked through things, I found out something extremely concerning. You see, there are a lot of experts, a lot of people who are basically highlighting how dangerous this is. But there's also a lot of experts, people who work for NASA, people who work for Boeing, former NASA employees and stuff like that. They're saying, hey, you know, there's no big deal, nothing really to see here. They're trying to downplay the situation because some of them have money involved, some of them have NDAs, some of them have certain contracts, and some of them are downright scared to say anything because we already have a couple of people who came forward saying stuff about Boeing and they mysteriously died or off themselves or who knows what happened there. But as I'm looking through the situation, one of the people who seems to be one of the leading, vo one of the leading voices powering this mission forward Regardless of the knowledge of the fact that the Starliner was leaking, one of the people that's trying to silence people, or at the very least, he's trying to convince everyone that there's no big deal here, is a guy by the name of Steve Stitch. Steve Stitch is leading the effort to basically quiet everyone down and tell everyone there's nothing to see here. The Starliner's just fine, even though the astronauts are stuck and can't get home. This guy, Steve Stitch. Well, folks, have you ever heard of the Space Shuttle Columbia? If you haven't heard of it, go look it up. It turns out that there were problems on the Space Shuttle Columbia. Problems that NASA knew about. Problems that a certain gentleman by the name of Steve Stitch, he knew about the problems on the Columbia. But guess what? Steve Stitch said it was no big deal. Steve Stitch said the Columbia would be safe. And what happened? We watched the Columbia blow to freaking smithereens, folks. And Steve Stitch was the leading voice telling everyone, nothing to see here, everything's okay, they will get home safely. And now the same mf -er is telling everyone there's nothing to see here with the Starliner, even though the thrusters stopped working and we got like five different leaks, nothing to see here. So it's just an all around crazy situation. And unfortunately, like many things right now in this world, we can't trust the experts because the experts are all paid off by these corporations 
that don't want the information getting out there that they're basically building crappy airplanes and now crappy space shuttles that can't make it to space. They can't even make it to, you know, on a four hour flight without their airplanes falling apart. But Steve Stitch, the same guy, I don't want to say responsible for the tragedy of the Columbia, but one of the leading voices, sir, everything's going to be okay. How can anyone trust this guy? Why would anyone trust what he has to say? And <laughs> mind you, the Starliner should have never taken off in the first place because they knew there were problems. And now those problems are worse because these astronauts can't get home. But guess who said it would be safe to do the launch? Steve Stitch. <laughs> it's like a freaking movie. This Steve Stitch dude is just behind the scenes smoking cigars like, yeah, blast it in outer space, why don't you? Yeah, see? Blast another Starliner into space. Meanwhile, freaking astronauts are blowing up in the sky. Astronauts are trapped on the International Space Station all because this dude. <laughs> but I want to go ahead and roll this clip because this is an interesting clip. You're about to watch a former astronaut, you know, a, a former employee basically speak about the situation. And in many ways, he's kind of trying to tiptoe around the situation. He's trying to make it seem like it's not that bad. But at the same time, he can't help but acknowledge like, yeah, if it wasn't that bad, then why haven't you gone home? So it's really interesting because you can tell that this guy knows that everything isn't okay, that something's not normal here, but he's not willing to really double down on it and say it. He kind of alludes to it, but let's go ahead and roll this clip and then I'll be right back with more thoughts. Here now for more insight on this Leroy Chow, former NASA astronaut and International Space Station commander. Uh, Leroy, you're the person we wanted to talk to about this. Thanks for joining us tonight. Uh, provide us with your insight here into what is causing delay after delay. How serious is this? Right, so Starliner has had its issues over the years during development, during testing, uh, even before launch. Launch got postponed several times, and finally, Butch and Sonny uh, made it into space and made it to the station. But on the way there, uh, suffered some more failures. Pre-launch, we had a small helium leak, developed four more helium leaks, had five thrusters malfunction and be disabled. They got on board the station. NASA and Boeing looked at it and they said, okay, not too big a deal. The five helium leaks are pretty small. We can tolerate leaks a hundred times that size. Uh, the thrusters, okay, four of them have been re-enabled. Uh, we're going to turn one off so they can come back anytime. So not a big deal. But then as you pointed out, they've delayed the return a couple of times, but each time they have said, uh, you know, Butch and Sonny can come back anytime. There's not a real issue with the vehicle. So what was perplexing about yesterday's announcement is that, well, we're going to delay it again and we're going to delay it indefinitely and we are evaluating data. So that raises more questions uh, than it answers. It's like, well, did you miss some data before? Or are there new data to look at? Uh, and why is it indefinite? And so they, you know, it's, it's kind of makes you furrow your brow a little bit and say, are there more issues or issues they missed before that we don't know about? Um, NASA really is kind of doing itself a disservice by not kind of to closing, disclosing more about what's going on. In my gut, I think that everything's fine with the spacecraft. Uh, this is probably a poorly worded, poorly thought through press release, which frankly wouldn't be the first time. And, uh, you know, it just was too vague and didn't answer any questions. So I think Butch and Sonny are fine. They're on the station. Uh, they're waiting to come home uh, either on this vehicle, which is the most likely scenario, or, you know, there are other scenarios that can play out. Uh, we can certainly send up a, uh, a Dragon spacecraft to get them if necessary, but they can stay almost indefinitely on board the station without any kind of danger. Wow. This launch initially was, you know, hailed as a success after, uh, you know, its, its third attempt, a much-needed win for NASA and the U.S. space program after several shortfalls, not being able to bring these astronauts home uh, right now, that word indefinitely, how big of a setback is this? Well, it's just perplexing. Why would they use that language? Why wouldn't they kind of set another date or at least a time frame? Uh, you know, you, it leaves everyone to, to speculate in that vacuum. You know, what new data are you looking at? What old data did you miss? 
So, like I said, my, my gut feeling is that everything's okay with the spacecraft. Butch and Sonny can come back on that spacecraft, uh, you know, when, when it's deemed to be appropriate. But, you know, we really, NASA could really help itself by giving more information out in this case. Um, but, you know, Butch and Sonny, consummate professionals, I have every confidence in them. I know them both very well, and I'm sure they'll have a, a good trip up there and a good trip home when it comes. Yeah, may, may that be the case. Uh, Leroy Chow, thank you so much for your insight. Into Do you guys see what I mean here? It's like everyone's kind of trying to tiptoe around the situation, trying to play it off like, oh, everything's fine. They could just stay up there forever, theoretically. Yeah, but that's not what's supposed to happen. And let's not forget about the leaked emergency test that just came out recently. Let's not forget about the super bug that the, these people are experimenting on, on the International Space Station. It's just too much weird stuff happening up there at once. It, it, it really is. And the fact that they kind of, I don't want to say hid, but how can I put it? There's a lot of information out there in the world that isn't necessarily hidden, but it's also not fed to you. So you have to kind of go looking for it. You, you kind of got to go looking and searching for it, right? I would assume, I would take a wild guess that the majority of Americans, the majority of people probably in the world, have no idea that they're researching weird super bugs up in the space station. Most people, if you even tell them that, some of you watching this video probably think that sounds crazy because it is crazy, but it's happening. So, you know, sometimes there's information out there about a lot of this wild stuff that goes on, but they kind of put forth an effort to make sure that you're more distracted by all of the other information they're putting out there. You get what I'm saying here? So, I mean, who knows what in the hell is really going on, but for them to pretend as if this is a big nothing burger, but at the same time, they're basically admitting they don't know if they're going to be able to get these astronauts back. They may need help from Elon Musk. And it's like, these are the same people who landed on the moon in the 60s? But, like... Was the moon landing fake? I don't even want to get into that, but how is it that we landed on the moon back then, but now we can't even make it to the International Space Station with all of the advancements in technology? And figuring out the truth about what's happening here is going to be basically impossible. I can tell you that right now. I'm putting forth an effort to find out more stuff, but at the end of the day, it's like, who am I to argue with some of these experts? You know what I mean? Because I'm not as knowledgeable about all of this stuff as they are. But at the end of the day, I'm not being paid off by NASA or Boeing. Uh, you know, I don't have a, a dog in the fight, if you will. I just want the truth. And one thing that people, the American public especially, one thing people need to accept is that the experts, regardless of how knowledgeable they are, they're often paid to not tell you the truth. They muddy the, they muddy the waters on purpose and things of that nature. But as of right now, the astronauts are still trapped. Starliner, who knows what's going to happen with that. I'll keep paying attention to the situation and I'll update you about this story probably tomorrow or the next day. But for now, let me know your thoughts about this down in the comments below. While you're down there, hit that thumbs up, hit that subscribe, ring that notification bell. And I'll talk to you all very soon in the next one.